Being a soldier is far from easy. Only the best of the best are capable. These valiant men and women fight tooth and nail to protect their respective countries and its people from harm's way. So every soldier is deadly in one way or another. But the soldiers in this video, these valiant heroes, or maybe monsters, depending on your point of view, are the deadliest of the deadly. These are 20 deadliest soldiers in American history. Number 20, Carlos Norman Hathcock II. Carlos Norman Hathcock II is a very talented sniper in the United States Marine Corps. He was born in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1942. Carlos has turned into one of the finest shooters in American history. Hathcock was known as a dangerous shooter during the Vietnam War because he could shoot well and hit his target. He served two tours of duty in Vietnam, entering successful combat against an incredible number of people. In 1967, Hathcock was in a fight with a North Vietnamese army sniper known as Cobra. The intense battle went on for several days, and Hathcock was able to beat his opponent. This was Hathcock's most well-known achievement. Throughout his military service, Hathcock was very stealthy, patient, and accurate. He often worked alone, deep behind enemy lines, using concealment and his unmatched shooting skills to defeat enemy targets with deadly accuracy. Hathcock helped the sniper group even after he got out of the military. He taught other shooters and made systems for sniper training to share what he knew and how good he was at it. Carlos Hathcock's amazing skills and achievements have had a long-lasting effect on the field of sniping. He was one of the best shooters in American military history. Hathcock's long-range shot from 2,286 meters was one of the longest recorded sniper hits during the Vietnam War. And I think we can all agree that that is seriously outstanding. Join the ranks of laughter and enlist your support by liking and subscribing to our video. Let's march to a fun-filled adventure together. Now it's time for the strange topic. There is a tale that has been slinking its way around the World Wide Web for some time now. A tale that strikes fear and terror into the hearts of all those unfortunate enough to read or hear it. A tale of native Congolese soldiers who came to America and sought major devastation, brutally slaying all who stood in their way. Their motive? Unknown. Their methods? Sadistic. It is a gruesome and often forgotten piece of American history. While no evidence of this horrific atrocity exists today, this artist's recreation does a haunting job of capturing the foreboding and intense profiles of the men, most of all, the fella at the front. As you can see, it is claimed that his face was always adorned in a striking mask. Gazing upon this cast fears into his victims. It is said that he wore it so as to hide his emotions. He wished to ensure those he never caught even a glimpse of him expressing fear, anguish, or remorse. He wanted them to know him as a cold only. Thankfully, the Americans won, and no other members of this tribe attempted anything like this again. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag strange topic. Number 19, Nicholas Irving. Nicholas Irving, also known as the Reaper, was an American sniper in the US Army. He was born on November 28th, 1984. When he was still young, he joined up with the 3rd Ranger Battalion. This was part of the 75th Ranger Regiment. While fighting in Afghanistan, Irving did a lot of awesome things on the ground. He developed a deadly reputation. He was soon known as one of the most dangerous snipers in United States history. He was able to defeat enemy troops with perfect accuracy because he was a good shot and had supreme military skills. Irving's record-breaking number of victories and ability to attack targets from huge distances made him a legend. He was also an important part of his team. The Bronze Star Medal with a V for honor was given to him as a reward for his bravery and skill. Irving left the service and went into the private sector. He later became a famous author. He wrote a book on his experiences throughout the war. The title of this book was The Reaper, autobiography of one of the deadliest special ops snipers. Nicholas Irving has the record for the longest proven win by a US soldier. It happened back in 2009 when he defeated an enemy soldier from a staggering 1500 meters away. Number 18, Brandon Webb, Navy SEAL. Brandon Webb was once a member of the US Navy SEALs. He is well known for the many awesome feats he performed as a SEAL. After Webb finished basic underwater demolition training, he joined the SEALs as a sniper. Along with other locations in the Middle East, Webb was stationed in Afghanistan and Iraq. 
He was acknowledged as one of the top shooters on the entire SEAL squad because of how superbly he shot and how effectively he commanded his team. Webb did more than just serve as a gun for the military. He actually helped develop systems for advanced gun training and taught what he had learned to his fellow SEALs. He then started the Sniper School, which is a place where people from the military, law enforcement, and the general public can get training. After all this badassery, Brandon Webb co-wrote a book called The 21st Century Sniper, A Complete Practical Guide. This book has remained a great resource, mostly for people who want to learn how to shoot like a champ. Number 17, Audie Murphy. Audie Murphy was an American soldier in World War II. He was born in 1925. He became one of the most admired battle stars of that war. Murphy stood out on the battlefield, even though he was small, because he was brave and driven when he was 18 years old. He figured he would join the army. In early battles, he quickly showed how brave he was. He got the Medal of Honor for his actions at the Battle of Holtzwehr in France. In this battle, he stopped the German attack all by himself. Murphy was in the US Army for three years and fought in nine major battles during that time. In spite of all the danger he faced, he survived and became a true hero. Murphy did even more than just win the Medal of Honor. He also picked up a few other important medals. These included the Distinguished Service Cross, two silver stars, and three purple hearts. Murphy enjoyed a successful acting career after the war. He appeared in more than 40 films in all. He starred in one of these films, which was based on his own novel, To Hell and Back, and it was released. That casting is really fantastic. Audie Murphy was a great hero who did countless brave things during World War II, but he was afraid of flying. During the war, he saw a fellow soldier pass away in a plane crash. This made him afraid of being in the air. Even though he was afraid of flying, he did it when he had to, which just adds to his courageous reputation. It shows a unique part of his nature since he was brave on the ground, but scared in the air. It's a reminder of the awful things he witnessed in the war and how even the bravest of men can be deeply affected by the horrors. Number 16, Colonel Lewis Millet. Colonel Lewis Millet, an American soldier, was born on December 15, 1920. He engaged in numerous wars, but his deeds during the Korean War are what made him most famous. He joined the US Army in 1940 and soon was fighting in the European theater of World War II. During the Korean War, he joined up again. This time, he was sent to the 27th Infantry Regiment. Millet led his company in a bayonet charge against strong enemy positions at the Battle of Bayonet Hill on February 7, 1951. Even though there was a lot of pushback and Millet was wounded, his men were inspired to keep going by his bravery and guidance. They got to their goal and won a very important battle. Millet got the Medal of Honor for his acts of bravery. He also won three Purple Hearts, two Silver Stars, and two Bronze Stars. After he got out of the service, Millet worked as a military aide. He wanted to help the troops even in retirement. He died on November 14th, 2009. His was a record of lifelong bravery and loyalty to his country. Colonel Lewis Millet's bayonet charge during the Korean War was one of the last times US troops charged with bayonets. Number 15, Sergeant Alvin York. American soldier Sergeant Alvin York was born on December 13th, 1887. He was known for just how hard he fought back in the awful conditions of World War I. York was from Tennessee, and in 1917, he was conscripted to join the army. York managed to attack the enemy lines on his own on October 8, 1918, during the Moose Argonne Offensive, after German machine guns fired heavily on York's unit. He accomplished this via sheer bravery and skill as a shooter. His actions not only stopped the serious threat to his unit, but also made it possible to capture a lot of enemy troops. York got a ton of awards for his bravery. These included the French Croix de Guerre and the Medal of Honor. York went back to the US after the war and became a very well-known celebrity there. He worked hard to improve schooling and help the people in his home area have better resources. On September 2nd, 1964, Sergeant Alvin York passed away. Ironically, Sergeant Alvin York didn't want to fight at first because of his religious beliefs. But after a powerful spiritual experience, he decided on a different path. He felt it was his duty to fight for his country. York was a good Christian and an advocate for peace. Originally, he tried to avoid serving in the military because he didn't agree with the war. But York finally chose to serve his country after a lot of thinking and talking with his minister and other important people. He thought that protecting the lives of his fellow troops was more important than following his own views against violence. Even though York was unsure at first, his actions on the battlefield made him famous. Now he is one of the most well-known war heroes in the United States. Number 14, General George S. Patton. 
General George S. Patton, a.k.a. Old Blood and Guts, was born on November 11, 1885. He was a well-respected military leader in the U.S. Army. Patton was an iconic figure in World War II. He was in charge of many different units and led heroic military actions. People liked him because he was good at formulating plans and was a tough but fair leader. The Allies were able to win in North Africa and then move into Sicily because Patton led them well. Patton was in charge of the Third Army during the infamous Battle of the Bulge in 1944. Despite extremely heavy weather and a fiercely resilient adversary, Patton emerged victorious. By stopping the Germans from advancing, Patton's men were able to alter the battle's dynamics. He was renowned for his devotion to his troops. Numerous awards, including the Purple Heart, the Silver Star, and the Distinguished Service Cross were bestowed upon him. Sadly, General George S. Patton died in a car crash in Germany only a short time after helping to end the war. General George S. Patton was known for his special Colt single-action army gun with an ivory handle, which he often carried on his military tasks. The gun is something of a symbol of his character. It's now on display at the U.S. National Army Museum. Number 13, Joseph J. Foss. On April 17, 1915, Joseph J. Foss was born in the United States. Foss was best known during World War II. In the war, he served as a pilot for the U.S. Marine Corps. He operated as a fighter pilot in the Pacific and did a spectacular job. In total, he made 26 enemy planes crash during dogfights. One of Foss's most notable moments was defending Guadalcanal in 1942. He was very brave during the fierce air battles, which earned him the Medal of Honor. Even after the war was over, Foss still helped the military and flew military aircraft. He was the governor of South Dakota from 1955 to 1959. After this, he actually ended up in charge of the American Football League. He certainly had an unusual career path. Foss was also a talk show host and a TV reviewer. On January 1st, 2003, Joseph J. Fox passed away after a long and varied life. Joseph J. Fox was a great pilot, but he also cared about the environment. He was a supporter of protecting animals and was a big part of making South Dakota's pheasant country famous for its pheasant shooting. Number 12, Richard Bong. Richard Bong was born in 1920 and was an American pilot. In fact, he was an awesome fighter ace during World War II. Bong was a U.S. Army Air Force's captain, where he flew the famous Lockheed P-38 Lightning. He did exceptionally well in his battle runs over the Pacific. He was able to shoot down 40 enemy planes. Naturally, Bong's record earned him plenty of awards. He was given the Medal of Honor and was also recognized as the American fighter pilot with the most victories. His main skills were how formidable and accurate he was with a gun and how well he planned for air-to-air -air battles. Bong began working as a test pilot for Lockheed after his war service ended. He helped develop new and even better warplanes. However, his plane crashed just a few hours before the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. It was a sad end to his life at such a young age. Richard Bong is honored with the naming of the Richard I. Bong Memorial Bridge in Superior, Wisconsin. A memorial to what was accomplished and how brave he was in serving his country. The bridge spans St. Louis Bay. Number 11, Gregory Boyington. During the Second World War, Gregory Boyington flew fighter planes and was in charge of a company in the Air Force. He was a part of the famous Black Sheep Squadron and was also nicknamed Pappy. It is believed that he destroyed 28 enemy planes. Boyington's skills and fearlessness as a pilot earned him a lot of respect from his fellow pilots. Boyington was shot down and taken prisoner by Japanese troops while he was serving. His life as a prisoner of war was miserable, and he had to live in awful conditions. Even though Boyington was in a lot of physical and mental pain, he refused to give any useful information to the enemy. Boyington was held in the notorious Camp Omori, which was close to Tokyo. The prisoners had to follow strict rules. They were watched by guards at all times. Boyington was finally freed after the end of World War II. After the war, Boyington rose to fame as a best-selling book. He wrote about his military service. Additionally, he made several TV appearances, all of which boosted his status as a military hero. Gregory Boyington's life and military experience were depicted in the well-known TV program Baba Black Sheep from the 1970s. Number 10, Eddie Rickenbacker. Eddie Rickenbacker was an American fighter ace and flying pioneer who was born on October 8, 1890. Rickenbacker's first job was as a race car driver. 
But he soon became more curious about the new world of airplane flying. After World War I broke out, Rickenbacker was keen to join up. He flew with the famous 94th Aero Squadron and quickly proved himself to be a skilled pilot. With 26 proven wins, Rickenbacker was named America's top flying ace of the war because of his brave tactics and accurate shooting. Rickenbacker started his own firm after the war. He remained a significant role in the aviation sector. He worked to advance commercial aviation while he was in command of Eastern Airlines. During World War II, Rickenbacker was given a position as a special advisor to the American Army Air Forces. He frequently traveled overseas on behalf of the government and his knowledge gained from the last war was quite helpful. In fact, Rickenbacker was on a war mission in 1942 when his plane lost control. He crashed into the Pacific Ocean. He and his crew were lost at sea for 24 days. Eventually they were rescued, however. Rickenbacker's story of how he survived this crazy event caught the attention of the public. It made him an even bigger national hero. Number 9. Richard O'Kane Richard O'Kane was a highly respected war hero. He served as a submarine captain in the U.S. Navy. O'Kane participated in the Second World War's Pacific Theater. He was a key player in that place. He was in charge of the USS Tang, a submarine renowned for devastatingly attacking Japanese ships. The USS Tang, commanded by O'Kane, sank numerous enemy vessels, including tankers, destroyers, and cargo ships. O'Kane was regarded as one of the best submarine commanders of the conflict because of his skill at strategic planning and bravery under enemy fire. When the Tang went down in October 1944 because one of its own torpedoes failed, O'Kane and some of his crew were taken prisoner by the Japanese. O'Kane was treated poorly and spent the rest of the war in jail. One of the most amazing things he did was sink 33 Japanese ships. This fact made him one of the most prolific submarine leaders in U.S. naval history. Clear the Bridge is the title of the book that O'Kane wrote. It was about his time as a submarine captain, and it was very popular when it was released. He also worked as an expert on submarine defense problems and became a champion for submarine safety. Richard O'Kane won the Medal of Honor. He was an exceptional leader and performed some awesome feats of bravery in battle. His service and ideas about how to fight underwater changed submarine warfare in a way that will last for a long time. Number 8. David McCampbell The American Navy employed David McCampbell as a fighter pilot. He took part in a number of significant battles, including the Battle of Midway and the Battle of the Philippine Sea. During the Battle of the Philippine Sea in June 1944, McCampbell destroyed nine Japanese planes. He did this all by himself on a single run. This crazy series of victories earned him a nickname the Ace of Aces. In fact, McCampbell is the American Navy pilot with the most victories in history. He shot down 34 enemy planes. McCampbell went back to work in the Navy after the war. He had different leadership and staff jobs, and when he left the Navy in 1964, he was a vice admiral. Number seven, Herbert W. McBride. American soldier and author Herbert W. McBride was well known for his books that he wrote on his experiences in World War I. McBride joined the U.S. Army in 1898. He fought in the Spanish-American War. He later joined the Army again and became a non-commissioned officer. McBride was a machine gunner in World War I. He spent time there serving on the Western Front. He wrote about what he saw there, and these writings were eventually published. The title of his book was A Rifleman Went to War, which became a famous tale of trench warfare. The book by McBride showed what war was really like. The main takeaway is how hard it was for men during the utterly brutal World War I. His vivid depictions and personal stories struck a chord. This book helped a lot of people at the time understand how terrible war was, and some attitudes were changed to a more pacifist mindset. In fact, McBride's book, A Rifleman Went to War, is still read today. It gives a look at the First World War from the point of view of a normal soldier. It also gives important first-hand accounts of what war is really like. McBride's works also had an effect on soldiers who came after him and helped military historians learn about how troops fought and what they went through during World War I. Number six, Eric England. Master Sergeant Eric Roy England was born on April 15, 1933 in Blairsville, Georgia. At age 17, he joined the Marine Corps. He was very good at shooting and won national competitions like the Leech Cup. This showed his early ability to shoot from a long distance. Master Sergeant Eric England fought in Vietnam during the Vietnam War. 
He was well known as one of the most deadly shots of the entire war. With 98 proven hits, he set an astounding record. England left the Marine Corps in 1974 and went back to the Appalachians, which is the place that he grew up in. There, he liked to shoot, fish, and watch NASCAR. He died in 2018. His body was laid to rest in Arling Cemetery. Even though he wasn't super well known outside of the sniper community, he has always been much admired by his fellow snipers. The book, Phantom of Fubai, by Dr. Joseph Blair Turner was about his life and experiences. Another famous sniper, Carlos Hathcock, said that England was a great man, a great shot, and a great Marine. In 2006, a sculpture in his honor was erected at the county building in Union County, Georgia. At the occasion, the now U.S. Senator Zell Miller, who was Georgia's governor at the time, spoke. He had been in the Marines with England. Senator Miller said that Eric England was his role model and that he owed his success to him. Number five, Chuck Mawini. Chuck Mawini was a Marine Corps sniper who went to Vietnam. Before joining the Marine Corps in 1967, Mawini went through extensive training to become a shooter. While serving in the 1st Marine Division, he traveled to Vietnam in 1969. With 103 verified successes as a sniper in Vietnam, Mawini was one of the most accomplished shooters in American military history. Mawini's enemies were terrified of him because he could eliminate threats from incredibly far away. After fighting in Vietnam, Mawini went back to his normal life and became a police officer in Oregon. He stayed out of the public eye. Mawini rarely talked about what it was like to be a sniper. Chuck Mawini was a great sniper, but his record of 103 confirmed victories did not become official until decades later. At the time of the Vietnam War, the US military didn't keep a lot of records about individual snipers. It took a lot of work and research by Mawini and others to get his achievements recognized. Number four, Adelbert Waldron. Adelbert Waldron enlisted in the United States Army as a young man. He joined the 9th Infantry Division as a sniper. He was dispatched to Vietnam in 1969. While there, he would lead the 9th Infantry Division's Sniper Detachment. 109 enemy soldiers are thought to have lost sniper battles to Waldron while he was in Vietnam. Waldron's skills as a sniper earned him a bucket load of awards. He was also awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the second highest military honor for gallantry in battle. Waldron returned to the U.S. after his time in Vietnam and continued serving in the U.S. Army. He had many different roles in the Army and left as a sergeant major. Adelbert Waldron was one of the best shooters in history. His game, he game-ended 109 people with his gun, and that is truly an amazing figure. Number three, Chris Kyle. Chris Kyle was born in 1974, and he was known worldwide as a Navy SEAL sniper with the skill set of a ninja. His actions in the Iraq War made him famous all over the world. Kyle joined the U.S. Navy in 1999 and went through SEAL training. After that, he was sent to the sniper element of SEAL Team 3. Kyle went to Iraq four times. While he was there, he became known as one of the deadliest shooters in U.S. military history. Kyle is known to have defeated 160 people while he was in Iraq. His amazing accuracy and ability to take out people from a long distance saved many of his comrades. Clint Eastwood made a well-known film based on Kyle's best-selling novel. The book was called American Sniper, and it was about his stint as an Iraqi sniper. Kyle died on February 2nd, 2013 at a pistol range in Texas as a result of the actions of a former soldier suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Chris Kyle's 160 confirmed victories finally beat Adelbert Waldron's record of 109 confirmed sniper victories. Kyle was known as the legend by his fellow Navy SEALs. This was because he was so loyal to them. Also, Iraqi insurgents called him the Devil of Ramadi because he was such a dangerous opponent. Number two, Lafayette G. Poole. Lafayette G. Poole was born on July 23, 1919 and rose to prominence as a tank commander during World War II. Poole soon found himself working as a tank gunner in the U.S. Army's 3rd Armored Division. He drove a Sherman tank nicknamed In the Mood and was famous among his troops for how well he fought. During the Battle of Aracourt in France, Poole and his team were in the mood to destroy 258 enemy tanks and other armed vehicles. He was soon lauded as one of the best tank gunners of the war. This was mainly because he could shoot at multiple targets at once, a skill mastered by very few gunners. Poole is another one with a cabinet chock full of medals. The Distinguished Service Cross, the Silver Star, and the Bronze Star are just a few of them. He also got the French Croix de Guerre for helping to liberate France. After the war, Poole went back to the US. He was a government employee until he retired. 
He died on October 30th, 1991. During World War II, Lafayette Jeepool is credited with destroying 258 tanks and armored vehicles belonging to the enemy. Number one, Dillard Johnson. Dillard Johnson is a former US soldier in the United States Army. He was an infantryman and performed many incredible feats while in the Army. Johnson enlisted in the Army in 1986. He was a member of various battalions, notably the 3rd Battalion, 7th Infantry Regiment. He went on numerous tours, some of which became legendary. He has served in Operation Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Enduring Freedom. Johnson was involved in many successful battles while in the military. His presence and winning mindset made him known as a top leader among his men. Johnson did one of his most amazing things during a battle in Iraq on March 25, 2003. He and his squadron came under attack from a sizable enemy force. They were able to fight back and defeat them, nevertheless. Johnson defeated over 20 enemy soldiers on his own, even taking out a few of their vehicles. For what he did, Johnson was given the Silver Star, which is the third highest military award for bravery in the United States. He left the army in 2005. Dillard Johnson said he defeated 2,746 enemies in warfare. This makes him one of the deadliest American soldiers in history. However, Johnson's claim has been met with some doubt and debate. The military keeps a secret record of his proven victories, which some say is a lot smaller than the real number. But either way, Johnson was a truly awesome soldier. Which of these soldiers do you find the most impressive? Would you ever consider a career in the US military? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.